Welcome to our lecture online. Surprisingly enough, virtual work methodologies can be used for systems that are completely constrained. Notice that this object here is attached to two blocks, one on each side, and it cannot move at all. And even though we're applying a force at the top, nothing is going to move. But yet, we can imagine that it could move. We can have a virtual displacement and a virtual movement, and therefore we can do virtual work. And we're going to try to find the reactionary force B sub X here because we're applying a force at the top. Now, to try and find B sub X, what we're going to do is we're going to apply the exact same technique that we used on the previous example. Things are a little bit different, so we have to be careful. But again, we're going to define the distance x between the two attach points at the bottom here and the distance y between where the force is acting and where the pins of attachments are at the bottom. So let's start with, uh, well, let's start with y here. y is this vertical distance. And if this is the angle of theta here, that would be L times the cosine of theta. So we can say that y sub naught is equal to L times the cosine of theta. Now, x can be defined by taking the L times the sine of theta, but we have to take it twice because we have to account for this portion and this portion right there. So x sub naught is equal to 2 times the length of the members times the sine of the angle theta because x is opposite to the angle theta, the way it's defined. So what we're going to do now is we're going to find the change in y if we imagine a small virtual displacement for this point right here to the right, we're going to have a small virtual displacement in the y direction from there to there. That's our dy, and there's our dx. We can find that by taking the differential. dy is equal to the derivative of this, which is minus L times the sine of theta times d theta. And we can find the small change in x, the virtual change in x, the, what we call the virtual displacement. dx is equal to... That would be 2L times the cosine of theta times d theta. So now we're going to describe the virtual work done. So we're going to say that the virtual work done is equal to the sum of all the forces from I equals 1 to N times all the displacements. Now notice that the reactionary force of A sub X and A sub Y do not aid in the virtual work done because there's no virtual displacement here. That stays in place. We're only going to allow this portion to move in a virtual sense. So the only, the only three forces that contribute is F, because there's a virtual displacement there, B sub X, because there's a virtual displacement here, and B sub Y, however, think about it, if the displacement is in the horizontal direction and the force is acting in the vertical direction, the angle between those is 90 degrees and the cosine of 90 is zero, which means we only need to take into account this force and B sub X. Those are the only two contributing forces to virtual work done. So now we can say that this is equal to, oh, and by the way, of course, this must be equal to zero because the system is in equilibrium. So now we can say that the first force, F, times the displacement dy plus the force B sub x times the displacement dx must equal zero. Now we have to be careful here because we do have to take into account that these are vectors and we're doing the, the dot product. These are vectors and we're doing the dot product here. Now. When you do a dot product, you take the magnitude of f times the magnitude of dy times the cosine of the angle between them. So in this case, we get f times dy, and dy is defined here, but we need to take the magnitude of dy. So this becomes L times the sine of theta d theta times the cosine of the angle between the two. But since they're both acting downward, the angle between the two is zero. So we take the cosine of zero degrees plus b sub x times dx, now dx will be 2L cosine of theta d theta, 2L cosine of theta d theta, times the cosine of the angle between them. Now notice that bx is pointing to the right, and dx is pointing to the right, so they're both pointing in the same direction, the cosine 
of zero degrees. And of course, that's equal zero and equal zero. All right. Now, notice since it's equal to zero, both terms have an L in them, so L cancels out. Both terms have a d theta in it, so that cancels out. So we're left with, on the left side, uh, we have f times the sine of theta times 1 plus b sub x times 2 times the cosine of theta times the cosine of 0, which is 1, and that equals 0. So now we can move f sine of theta to the right side. So we have b sub x is equal to, whoop, let me leave that here for now. So times 2 cosine of theta is equal to minus f times the sine of theta. And now when I, when I divide both sides by 2 times the cosine of theta, I get b sub x is equal to minus f over 2 times the sine divided by the cosine, which is the tangent of theta. And this is the force b sub x. Now, it's negative. The reason why it's negative is because b sub x is actually, act, actually acting in the opposite direction. If I push down on f, then this member will try to slide to the, ref, to the left, and the block will hold it in place by pushing, or it, should, it will try to slide to the right, and the force b sub x will act to the left to keep it from going to the right, so therefore b sub x is a negative f over 2 times the tangent of theta, indicating that the way I've drawn it here is in the opposite direction, from the way it actually acts. And so that's how we find any forces on any members by using virtual work. Even if we have a completely constrained system, we can still imagine that some part of it could move. We make it move in a virtual sense, and then we calculate the virtual work done by that small amount of displacement. And that's how it's done.